Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Janine Lalonde, also known as Dean Jay from the Office of Admission. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon for a webinar with the staff from Housing and Residence Life at UVA. Um, we're so thankful that you're here. Congratulations on your admission to the university. I just wanna do a little housekeeping before we get started. I wanted to let you know that this presentation is being recorded and it will be posted in a few days on the virtual UVA website. The virtual UVA website also lists some other webinars that are going on um, in the next two weeks. And we also have some webinars coming up just with the housing office, which they'll be showing you in a minute. Um, but I'll be stepping away uh, to let the housing folks take over, but I wanted to just point out at the bottom of the screen, there is a Q&A tab where you can submit questions that you'd like answered. Um, and we'll have some staff who are answering them quietly behind the scenes, but then we'll turn to Q&A um, towards the end of this presentation and you'll be able to um, hear the staff members go over the questions. So that being said, let me hand it off to our Housing and Residence Life staff members. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Petters and I'm an Associate Dean. I also serve as the Director of Residence Life and orientation new student programs. And I'll be entering my eighth year at UVA this coming August. You're muted, Countess. Sorry, yes, I thought I'd, I'd gotten this down. <laughs> Hi, my name is Countess Hughes and I'm the Assistant Director for Housing Assignments. I graduated from the University of Virginia in the way back, and I have now rejoined Housing Residence Life. This is my fifth year. Hi, everyone. I'm Jamel Reed. I'm a rising fourth year, and I am one of the co-chairs of Housing and Residence Life. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to overview some of our areas of responsibility and then answer um, some anticipated frequently asked questions from the audience. Um, so give, to give you a sense of our residence life operation, um, Housing and Residence Life mission is that we work collaboratively to create open, welcoming communities on grounds for students at the University of Virginia. And residents are really empowered to engage their potential as scholars and leaders through self-governance and participation in activities and leadership programs. We have several pro professional staff located in our office at Gibbons House, um, which we're now um, in a virtual world. And we're here to provide students with the support and the assistance that they might need. Um, you can reach out to us right now through email. Um, housing at virginia.edu is our main encompassing email address that you're welcome to send us a note at any time. Um, our residence life staff reports directly through the Office of the Dean of Students within Student Affairs. And we help guide the resident staff program and are available for any students with questions who aren't sure where else to go or who want advice on ways to get involved within their residential community. And I'm really fortunate to work closely with many different student leaders in the resident staff program including Jamel, who's on our panel today. Um, and our resident staff, they're the university representatives within each residential community on grounds. So all first year students will have a resident advisor, an RA, who will be there to support them throughout the year. The RA will either be on the student's hall, in their suite, or in a suite nearby. In August, each RA will reach out to their community to welcome them, introduce themselves, and to help them get through the initial move-in and few weeks of the semester. We also have um, several signature programs within our department that include the residential leadership experience, which are the various hall councils for students to help lead their community, professors' picks, which is where various professors select a book that groups of students read over winter break and discuss in the spring with that professor. The last lecture series, which is where veteran faculty or deans share their wisdom with the university community 
as though it were their final lecture. Our student and professional team work closely with orientation and new student programs in welcoming and transitioning in and through new students to UVA. And so as I turn things over to my dear colleague, Countess Hughes, I wanted to highlight an option for all incoming first year students, the residential colleges. Brown, Hereford, and the international residential colleges are living learning communities with students of all class years. They each have a faculty principal and a director of studies who weave the academic experience into life outside the classroom. You'll be able to preference these communities in the housing application process, and they each have their own separate application. There are limited spaces for first year students, and most of our students will ultimately live in designated first year buildings, which are not residential colleges. But if the vibrant, academically engaging environment appeals to you, we urge you to consider and apply for one or more of the residential colleges. The residential colleges are hosting information sessions via Zoom. The dates and times are on the slide. Um, and the Zoom links are also on the HRL Facebook page. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Countess Hughes. Hello again. Um, I am with, along with my two assistant, um, I, my two assignment coordinators, and I, we manage the room assignments process for approximately 6,800 beds and we, that, are, that we have on grounds, including undergraduate, and graduate students, faculty, and staff housing. Um, in simple terms, we put heads in beds. And now I'll turn it over to Jamel. So as co-chair of Housing and Residence Life, I help lead the resident staff program as a whole. Um, resident staff are placed in the dorms to ensure the safety of the inhabitants of the association, as well as tasked with fostering a community within the building. And so each dorm is composed of a senior resident advisor who advises the staff or resident of resident advisors who are situated throughout the association. And each resident will have an assigned resident advisor as a support system while they live on grounds. So we, we are predicting that some of these questions um, are on your minds. And so we wanted um, to go ahead and answer some of those key questions before we open things up to the audience. So, Jamel, as a student here at UVA, um, what was it like to live on grounds during your first year? So, as a student perspective, um, I particularly loved my hall that I lived on first year. I lived in um, a hall-style dorm, um, Ball Stobie, and it was a great community. My RA, Jared, did a great job at really fostering a sense of camaraderie between my hallmates. And so he did that through different programs that he held um, and different things that he encouraged us to do. For example, we had a program called Baking with the Bros, where every Tuesday night we went down to the lobby and we made some kind of baked good and we just talked about our weeks and how it went. And that was just a great way to acclimate me to the university community. And then the other RAs in the building really worked to um, create camaraderie between different halls. So we were great friends with a bunch of different halls on, well, inside of Boston, and it just led to a community that was very much collaborative, and it has left me with some of my best friends here at UVA. Thank you very much, Jamel. Um, so Countess, I know a lot of the folks who are here with us today, um, they want to know what the housing assignment process looks like. So what does that housing assignments process look like for first years? You mean they don't know what it was, wanted, what it was like my first year in the 1980s? <laughs> all right. Let's maybe jump ahead to present. <laughs> all right, maybe. All right. So first of all, all first year students are required to live on grounds. And all first year housing has air condition. Um, we're very excited about that. So just to note that any students who have medical needs for housing um, should make sure that that is documented with our Student Disability Access Center or SDAC as it's known. And this needs to happen prior to June 1st. 
It is difficult to accommodate needs after assignments have been posted. So the process begins when the application becomes available online on May 1. Students will log in via NetBadge anytime before June 1 and rank three of six room preferences and accept the housing agreement. The process is not first come first serve, it is random assignment and random means random. Students will have the following six options when they log on to their housing application and will preference three of them. So the six options are a single room in a first year housing area, a double room in a first year housing area, a triple room in a first year housing area, Brown Residential College, Hereford Residential College, or the International Residential College. So there are, again, six choices, three of them in the first year areas, and one of three residential colleges, which uh, Dean Petters spoke about in his introduction. He also noted that the residential colleges require an additional application. And if a stu student ranks one of the residential colleges as one of their options, they will be provided with the additional questions or be pointed to the link for the questions in the case of Brown College. And again, here's a plug for the residential colleges in their Zoom sessions so that you can learn more about those um, in case you want a residential college to be one of your three choices out of your six options. Remember that housing is guaranteed and required for first year students, but due to availability, preferences are not guaranteed. Um, just want to make sure that you understand that. Um, applications for those who applied to the residential colleges are reviewed by the students and staff in those residential colleges and those selected to live in the residential colleges are scheduled to be announced on June 10th. Once selected to live in a residential college, college students may not change the selection. So that's Thank sort you. of how our assignments application process goes. Excellent. Thank you, Countess. So I don't know um, if a lot of people are also thinking, well, gosh, I'm able to apply. I understand kind of how the application works. I list these preferences. But, you know, I maybe have a best friend or someone that I know I want to live with and preference them as my roommate. Or they may want to do like I, I did when I was going into college, which was I went random. And I had a great first year roommate experience um, because I didn't, I didn't have to do anything going into the housing application process. I just was open and I got randomly selected with another student. Um, so can you kind of discuss, Countess, how the roommate selection process works? But of course, Andy, uh, we do encourage students to elect to be assigned a roommate and not request a specific roommate because what a great way to meet somebody new in your class. But if you do want to request a specific roommate, preferencing will take place within the housing application from June 11th through June 15th. To June 11th through June 15th. Look for an email to your UVA email address once the process is available. Roommate requests must be mutual. One person makes the request and the other person accepts. Students accepted to the scholars community or residential college can only request roommates within the same community. Pay attention to the deadlines. Requests must be completed in the housing application online within the time frame scheduled. Room assignments are scheduled to be posted in early July. And once assigned, there are no room changes before the second week of school in the fall. 
Every space is generally assigned. And if students need help negotiating a roommate situation, we have residential staff available to assist. So again, all, if you decide to or request a roommate, the request has to be mutual. Um, but we do encourage students to elect to be assigned a roommate and not necessarily request a specific person. Excellent. Thank you, Countess. So this next question is one that is often asked of me, and it's, uh, can students have a car during their first year on grounds? And I always like to differentiate between move-in, so when students are returning to grounds, moving into their dorm, um, their families are, are, of course, able to drive their cars um, down to our residential communities, and they'll be able to unload as close to the buildings as possible and then park in designated long-term parking locations. But after move-in weekend, that our first-year students are not able to have a car on grounds. Um, so we know that may be very different from their experience in high school, um, where they maybe had a car that they rode to park at their high school. Um, but we, we just don't allow our first-year students to have a car so that way they can be fully immersed in our residential experience here on grounds. So, Countess, back to you. Here we are, we're talking about first year students, new students coming into UVA, and people are often then immediately wondering, what does housing look like for second year and beyond? Well, thank you, Andy. We wanna say that you have time you have options. We encourage students to take time to get to know the community and make friends before making decisions about second year housing. There's no housing shortage in Charlottesville. On grounds housing selection typically begins in November for residential colleges and language houses and room selection for the other upper class areas begin in January. Remember that on-grounds housing is not guaranteed after the first year, but in the past years, we've been able to offer housing to those who have applied. We strongly encourage and suggest that second year students consider on-grounds housing. If you think you want to live off-grounds, take your time and be sure that you become familiar with the property and read the lease carefully before committing. But we do really encourage you to apply and suggest that you take a look at on-grounds housing for your second year. And know that um, we will also have a series of kind of workshops and information sessions, many of which the Countess will be leading herself um, to help students avoid getting into a situation where they feel like they wish they had more information before they made a decision. And so we really prioritize trying to educate and inform our new students um, before, before signing a lease, whether that's um, off grounds or our housing agreement on grounds. So thank you, Countess. Um, okay, Jamel. This is something always um, exciting for people to learn about. Um, we talked a little bit about the RAs, the resident staff program. So what is an RA and what should a student expect from their RA? So an RA is a resident advisor and it is an upperclassman student who is tasked with building community within the hall or suite um, that you're situated in your first year. And so something to really expect from an RA is community building. So they are required to host programs to really show you different parts of the university, as well as make you feel comfortable in your living space. And these programs can range from anything from movie nights to um, different career opportunities that they have brought into the dorm to showcase all the different opportunities that are afforded to you as a student. Um, but they're also, my RA specifically is one of my first friends that you in addition to Kate, and they're a great support system for checking in about classes, um, checking in with like 
different maintenance issues we may have with the building, um, as well as just there to really help you with your transition from high school to college. And so um, some other things to really look for with your RA are just really um, going throughout the community and really just learning and creating a space for yourself at UVA. So one of the RAs in my building who actually was in my RA actually took me to some different events like uh, multicultural events, as well as different things going on with the communities that she belonged to. And it was great to really experience something that was outside of my comfort zone. And it was an encouraging person who was there with me along the ride to help me really feel at home at UVA. But to learn more about RAs and what we actually do, we have an RA video actually on the Housing and Residence Life website that you can go check out. Great, so now we're gonna um, have an open floor to be able to answer the questions that have come through um, thus far. So maybe to get started, uh, because there are lots of questions about specific dates, can we run down the timeline one more time of when applications become available, when they need to be submitted, and when notifications, the different notifications are made? Okay. The application will become available online on May 1. It must be completed, and by completed, it just means ranking three of the six options and agreeing to the housing agreement by June 1. The roommate process, or I would say the residential college announcements happen June 10th. The roommate preferencing system, should you choose to do that, is June 11th through the 15th. And then housing assignments will be posted July 2nd. Awesome. So for everyone who is writing in questions about what date certain things happen, there you go. Um, there are lots of questions about what exactly you get to pick and it was covered, but let's just say one more time, like what you get to request and what you don't get to request when it comes to your building or your room. All right, so the only thing that you get to preference is one of the three residential colleges or a single room, a double room, or a triple room in a first year area. So again, the six choices are single room, double room, triple room, Brown Residential College, Hereford Residential College, the International Residential College. So those are the only six things. And within those six, you can rank three of them. Those are the only preferences. There's no other choice. It really is random um, and those are the, the only preference options you have. Again, single, double, triple, or one of three residential colleges, you get to preference three of those six options. Thank you. Okay, a very common theme is about roommates and what the questions look like when a student does what we call random, but it's really letting housing and res life match them with a roommate. So what are those questions like? Random is random. There are the questions that are provided during roommate preferencing. I think there are five, and that is meant to assist students find other students. When assignments does um, roommates or matches roommates, there are no questions. It is random. And after working, so I was an RA here at UVA um, and I worked in a residential life uh, system, housing and residential life for four years as both an undergraduate student and a graduate student. And I have worked at seven different universities, all in housing and residence life. And I will tell you, there are no amount of questions that we could ask that would really 
set you up to like have your roommate be your BFF. So it, there, there, there are no questions and we encourage you to use the opportunity to meet someone new and just talk to them and get to know them. Help them understand kind of who you are as a person. If you don't know, ask a family member or sibling or friend, they will let you know. And to share that information with the person you're assigned, if you elect to be assigned a roommate, and really just use your good communication skills to make sure the person understands who you are, you understand who they are, and you have an opportunity. This is also where your RA comes in to do a roommate agreement and kind of talk out some of those, uh, what we have found to be common, common questions and common things that happen when you're living in a space with someone else. And so if you want to try to find someone, there are questions for you to use from that June 11th to 15th uh, time period. But once, um, when we are assigning students, random is random. Uh, and we trust you all to be able to meet someone new and get to know them. And again, let them know who you are. There are a few students asking if athletes are put together in any certain section or floor. Um, we work with athletics. And so if you are an athlete, um, if you're a division one athlete, I would um, tell you to speak with your coach um, in regards to that, because we do work with athletics in regards to um, assignments and pairing of uh, Division I athletes. Uh, this is a very specific one. Um, if a student does not ch put three choices on their application, what would happen? They have to select three. Okay, um, some questions about um, co-ed housing and um, what that looks like in the different buildings. Um, all of our buildings are, co are single gender by room and for the most part floors. It kind of depends on the design. So if it's a suite style building, everyone in that suite will be, um, will be assigned, will be the same gender. The same thing mostly for most floors, um, but they all of the buildings um, are co-ed. Um, there are some questions from people who are interested in single rooms and um, whether there are single bathrooms as well. There are very limited single spaces available. Um, there are, and, and again, if you look on our uh, website, uh, you can explore the different um, first year housing options uh, and they will tell you what they are. They kind of don't matter until you are actually assigned a room, but if you kind of want to see uh, where single rooms might be, uh, you can do that. I will say that depending on the area, there are some what I call uh, single seater bathrooms, which are bathrooms that are self-contained. Uh, for instance, in our McCormick Road housing that's been renovated, it's community style on the hallway, but there is a bathroom on the hallways that is what I call a single seater where uh, it's one person in the bathroom at a time. Um, in some of our other areas, there are similar accommodations as well. So I'll say again, if students have a medical concern uh, where that is of issue, then they need to make sure to get their documentation into our Student Disability Access Center, or SDAC as we call it, um, so that we can take that kind of request into consideration. Now, you may just want a single seater bathroom or a single room, it has nothing to do with a medical accommodation, but I wanted to reinforce that if a student does have a medical need for any kind of housing accommodation, 
um, then they need to make sure that they get their information in to a student disability um, access center staff. So a pretty common question that I'm seeing is um, how prevalent is going random? Is that in the majority or do you think that most students are, are requesting a roommate these days? Um, I would say that varies uh, from year to year. I would say somewhere around anywhere between half and up to 60 some percent, depending on the year. Uh, I think that there are more and more students who are electing to be assigned a roommate instead of trying to find a roommate in the five years that I've been here. Um, and I think it's because students are seeking um, that diversity and uh, the opportunity to meet someone new, maybe someone who's not like them. Uh, and so I would say that uh, we are increasingly students are electing to uh, be assigned a roommate uh, instead of requesting someone specific. Okay, this is kind of a, a, a nice one, a little bit of a change of pace. Um, someone's asking like, what kinds of safety features are in the residence halls? Students feel safe in, in university housing. Yeah, that's a, a great question. Safety is one of the things that we uh, prioritize and care so much about because in order for people to, to feel um, settled and at home, they need to feel safe. Um, so in terms of our access systems that we have, in order to get into any of our residential community, um, the student will have to use their ID in order to get into either the building or if they're in a suite style community to get in through their suite door. And then there's also going to be um, some additional controls depending on the building type. But then again, when a student gets to their room, their student ID will be required um, to get into their room door itself. Um, and that, that goes along with um, as well our, our hall bathrooms in order to get into the hall community baths. Um, you have to have your student ID to get in there. So in order to get into a building, get into a suite, you have to live in that particular location or community and have the appropriate access levels to get in there. Um, we do spend a great deal of time with our resident staff, helping them to feel prepared to have conversations with their residents about safety and security um, at the university more broadly. Um, and I'll ask Jamel to kind of talk about how Maybe he's had those conversations with first year students in the past and what things he's focused on during those initial floor meetings. Yeah, so the initial floor meetings, when we really go about it, we just set the norms for like the hall and how we're gonna go about like really creating a safe environment for everyone. And so that usually starts with um, just everybody sharing like something about themselves. Like we start off the year I'm really just trying to get to know each other. And then once we set this foundation, we then go off and then we talk about the building as a whole. So some things we really stress are um, keep your key cards with you at all times. Don't really prop your door open if you're going to be leaving for a long extended period of time, um, as well as try not to let people follow behind you when you enter the dorm. Um, just really basic things just to make sure that safety is the utmost priority when it comes to um, housing. So I just want to address the people who are still asking questions about the timeline. Um, if you didn't hear it, it is on the housing website and the address is right here on the screen. Um, housing would never do something that you would have to listen to and they would never tell you again. So everything that you need to know about the timeline is laid out on their website. Their website also has photos and layouts of all the different buildings um, that you have access to. So some of these very nitty gritty questions about um, what's inside certain buildings, you, you can probably explore and answer those um, yourselves. Um, I will ask, there was a fun one that I saw that Jamel might like to uh, address and it was about um, if there are any interesting or fun traditions that are tied to some of the halls. You cut off a little bit. Could you repeat the end of the question? A uh, question about whether there were any fun traditions associated with different halls at EA. Hey, 
in case you didn't hear Jamel, it, um, Dean Jay was asking about uh, traditions that may coincide with particular residential communities. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on like which community. I'm really familiar with like um, regular dorm, like dorm life because I was in the regular alderman style dorms. But for example, something that happens university wide is we have mandatory quiet hours in housing and residence life when exam periods come up. And so a cool thing that SRs and RAs try to host is a final scream before um, we all have to quiet down for the rest of the time for finals. So usually RAs get a speaker and we run around the entire building um, collecting residents and we all, and we collect everyone and then we go outside and then we have a, conglom um, a conglomerate yell outside, like a scream, just to really alleviate all the stress that we're um, really holding inside of ourselves from this exam period that's about to happen. But it's a great way to just, I don't know, just get rid of stress that we may have had um, throughout the school year and prepare for a great exam season. But some other things that happen, for example, um, in the IRC and language houses, there's different dinners that go on um, between in the language houses, specific language groups, as well as in the IRC, just different pods come together and they have dinner together. And then some traditions that happen with Brown, there's a, actually a dining room inside of one of the dining rooms on grounds and it's a space where they all eat together um, just to really be in a collective group so that way they can meet their friends and just have a great time together um, as Brown residents. All right, um, there are some questions about um, visitors, like are there visitation hours? Is there a curfew in college? Um, how do you, how, what do you all say about that? Yeah, so this is, this is great to think about and I'll probably have Jamel talk about how he's approached this as an RA. Um, we do have a guest policy, which is listed in a couple of different places, our terms and conditions for housing and residence life, and also our set of policies at the university in the record. And so the guest policy that we have um, is one that residents are able to have guests um, of either gender, um, however they identify, come to their room, so long as they have the consent of their particular roommate, suite mate, or partner mates, depending on, again, the setup in their particular room. Um, and so that's really important for there to be communication between roommates and suite mates about whether it's okay for people to come by during certain hours, certain days of the week, um, because what we sometimes have seen conflict arise is when there's not a good shared understanding about what's okay. Um, but we don't have a particular restriction in terms of particular days or hours. Um, but again, I'll ask Jamel to talk about how he's approached this as an RA and working with residents. Yeah, so that really starts with that conversation that we have at the beginning of the year with our hall and as a whole and then we also have that con we have that conversation with roommate pairs and so when we set these precedents that's really what we go off for the year and so some roommates may not be okay with having visitors in the room past let's say 10 p.m and so they come to um, an agreement with that and then that's what we really hold by with the roommate agreement that they um, create and sign at the beginning of the semester and so when it comes to just visitation, as well as um, curfew, there's no curfew. Um, you could stay out as long as you um, want, but RAs are really put in place just to ensure the safety. So if they don't see you as frequently, we will check in and just check to make sure that you're doing all right, just to make sure that your transition to the university is going smoothly. Um, but visitors in general um, refer back to that housing agreement that we came up with at the beginning of the semester, just to make sure that we are being respectful of everybody's um, space. Thank you. Um, before I say this next question, I just wanna remind people that there are sessions for each um, of the residential colleges or, well, this afternoon we have Brown, oh yeah, and Hereford and International. Okay, so these are the residential colleges and they have their own sessions coming up. 
But here's the question. If you choose a roommate and apply to a residential college, will both of you be placed in the residential college? Is there a chance that one goes into the residential college and one does not? It's very specific, but I thought it was interesting. No, but, but it's true. So if you have someone in mind who you wanted to be your roommate and you both apply to residential colleges, there is no guarantee that both will be accepted to the residential college. And again, you can only request a roommate if that person is also has also been selected to the residential college. Um, and so the, the kind of your pre, if you will, kind of if you have a roommate in mind, um, that is not something that's taken into consideration with the residential college's selection process. Uh, so they evaluate each person's application on its own merit. And so they would have no way to know uh, that you are thinking about someone as a roommate already. So no, it's not possible. Um, but, but I will say within the residential college, uh, once selected, there are ways to um, search for roommates who are within that same residential college. Okay, we have some questions about triples, um, whether how common triples are, if you can request the two roommates who could be in a triple, and if we have forced triples at UVA. So um, the, the answer is, is that right on the application, you can only request one other roommate, um, but if you do uh, have your eye and you would like a triple, um, you can email us and let us know that you have a, a third person and we'll make note of that because triples are, are fairly, are, are rare. Um, and so there are very few, they're sort of like on the lines of single rooms. Um, there are very few single rooms, there are very few triples. The great, great, great majority of our rooms are all doubles. So if you are thinking about a triple, um, you can email us that third roommate and we will make sure that it's mutual. Um, and then based upon the random assignments, um, you will, um, if you're not assigned to a triple, um, we do try with folks who have asked for that to at least get folks on the same floor, um, which is a little bit more of the manual process than our automated process that happens. Um, but we do try to work with those few people um, who have that. Uh, and I don't anticipate uh, force triples this year. So for us, force triples means assigning three people to a room that is what I call a designed double room. So the triples that we have are rooms that are designed triples. Should it should we need more space, more bed space? That is when we sometimes assign three people to a double room and is what people would commonly call a force triple. I don't anticipate that this year, but you just never know. There are many unanticipated things that have happened. So um, if we do end up having to have uh, three people in what is a design double room, we uh, will let those folks know that they are in that situation. And then we work to de-triple that space as spaces become available um, in other areas on grounds. And so we will work with those three students to decide if they want to decide who the third person is, um, or who the person is who would be reassigned, or if they don't want to decide, we'll pick randomly, or if they don't respond to our emails, we'll pick the person who gets reassigned to another room on ground. So we do try to de-triple those, um, what people are calling forced triples, uh, hopefully before the school year begins. And thus far, we've been able to do that. I have also been surprised by the number of students who are placed in those three people in a double room. And after they get assigned together, they don't want to leave each other. It has been quite fascinating. And so they elect to all stay as a threesome in a two, um, in a double room. So I do find that fascinating. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's the skinny on triples, both designed and not designed. There are some questions about things like kitchens and laundry. So maybe I all could cover what kinds of spaces are in the halls that are not actual rooms for sleeping? Yeah, so there's a there's kind of a wide variation of community spaces that we have across grounds. Um, for example, if you think of a suite style building, what's great about those areas is that each suite has its own kind of living room and common area for students to hang out um, and get to know each other better. Um, relax, study, all those different things are right there and available for students. And their bathroom has a, a lower ratio of students um, to the particular bathroom facility. And so um, the bathroom and living room is there in the suite style building. In the hall style buildings, generally what we have is, of course, the bedrooms and the hall bathroom. But in some of our hall style buildings, we even have lounges or study rooms right there on the floor. And then in other buildings that maybe don't have the floor lounges, they're in central locations at the base of a building. Um, most of our buildings across grounds do have kitchen and laundry facilities, either in the building itself or in a building nearby that's pretty close and accessible to get to those other amenities. And we do encourage you to look over our website to get a sense of the variety of residential community type and the various common areas, study rooms, kitchens, um, et cetera, that we have. And what's great is that since there is that variety, no matter where your student ends up, they're gonna have an incredible experience and that's gonna be the best dorm because it's where the student, uh, where you either are living or if you're a parent or a family member where your students living, that will be the best dorm. The other glorious piece about the random assignment is, is that you don't have to do all the investigation up front and try to find out what the building is, where it is, what's in it. I want to make sure that, you know, I get the best because again, wherever you're assigned is the best building on grounds. But after your assignment comes out, which again, July 2nd, you'll have the opportunity to go on our website and find your specific building and look, look at it, look at pictures in it, look at the floor layout, um, look at what furniture comes in that room. And so there's lots of information about the specific building once you have the opportunity to receive your assignment um, on the online, on the housing, application is where the app is where the assignment will be posted and so you'll get to know all about the best building which is where you're going to be assigned um, after your assignment is posted there are some questions about um, housekeeping um, particularly with bathrooms and also bathroom and suites um, how does that work yeah, so in all of our uh, first year dorms, whether they're hall style or suite style, we do have housekeeping come through on a regular basis. The one exception is if you're in some of our Alderman Road buildings um, and you're in a particular room in those buildings where you have a private bathroom, that because of the privacy of that bathroom being located within a particular bedroom, our housekeeping staff do not go in to those particular bathrooms to clean. But those are very rare. The vast majority of our communities, the hall style, the suite style, and even um, the hall style communities in the residential colleges, those bathrooms are cleaned by housekeeping. One other kind of exception is in Brown College. If you're living in Brown College, those bathrooms are also more private and those are not cleaned by housekeeping staff. Okay, this is just a fun little um, change from when we all went to college. So I want you to tell them all how you pay for your laundry machine. Yeah, so it's, so when you go to UVA, you're signed an ID card. 
So you're assigned an ID card, and this is what you'll use to swipe into things like dining halls and also for laundry. And so there's different um, centers where you'll go up to, uh, you'll put your clothes in either the laundry, uh, excuse me, either the washer or the dryer, you will walk up to the machine and you'll swipe your card, select the laundry machine that you are using, they're all numbered, so you just check out which number is associated with the laundry machine that you put your belongings in. And so once you do that, you just key in that number and you click enter and it will deduct, it will deduct the balance from your UVA um, Advantage account that you've set up at the beginning of the year. And then you just start the washer. Thank you. Um, okay, some questions about whether submitting your um, housing survey early gives you priority in the assignment process. Whether you submit your application and rank your three choices, the first 10 minutes is open or the last 10 minutes, it doesn't matter as long it is random for anyone who completes their application by the June 1 deadline. So the application opens May 1, it closes June 1. Anytime within that time period, you rank your three choices and accept the housing application and then it's random from there. There are some questions about how convenient residence halls are when it comes to getting around at UVA um, and whether you need to use a, a bus to get to and from your hall and or to, to class or to um, the main parts of grounds from your hall. Well, I always, always like to remind everyone that all of our on-grounds facilities are on ground. So no matter where it is that you land in terms of your assignment, um, you may hear rumors that one particular building is located off grounds or really far away. And really, they're all truly on grounds. Um, they're very convenient to our residential dining facilities, which we have three located in and around where all of our dorms are. Um, we also have our rec centers, which are located right by the residential areas. And so where the classes are on that particular section of central grounds, that students will often figure out the best routes to take in terms of walking from their particular dorm to where their classes might be. And so some dorms might be really close to engineering um, and the classes they're offered in chemistry and Gilmer and physics. And then um, those classes that are located by the lawn um, maybe we'll take a little bit more time to walk to. Um, but if you're in a, in a location that is um, right by a bus stop, that's a great way to just hop on the bus um, and easily get from point A to point B. Um, I know I take the bus all the time from where our offices are in Gibbons House to get up to the other sections of grounds. Um, so whatever mode of transportation is best for you, um, I know that we have uh, bike rental, and then also some of the private companies have come in with scooters. And if you do have your own bike or rent a bike or take one of these scooters, just be sure to please be safe, put a helmet on, be aware of your surroundings and be careful out there. Um, but all of, our, all of our residential areas are pretty close by to those things that you'll need. Um, could you talk about whether there are any renovation projects going on right now um, with residence halls? Yes, we are just wrapping up our uh, many year renovation of McCormick Road. We've gone from old to cold. So all the McCormick Road uh, dorms when they are open this fall will have air conditioning for the first time ever. And we're really excited that that community has been transformed. Um, we also do an array of other facilities, um, upgrades, new furniture um, in our Courtney, Douglason and Fitzhugh buildings. We've been adding air conditioning into those areas over the past two years. So we've had a lot of renovation work that has been going on um, over the past many years. Um, um, by the way, folks, I'm just going to tell you that none of us are going to be making the decision about um, when UVA uh, has an online, whether UVA has an online summer session or online fall session when we start um, 
it's flattering when people think that we're in charge of it all, but there are some other folks at UVA who will be uh, making that decision. And just know that we will absolutely be communicating with our students um, as, as plans develop. Um, let's see, can uh, one of you discuss quickly, briefly, um, what happens at the end of your first year? Um, what are your options after that? Yeah, so I know um, we talked a little bit about that earlier, but um, after a student's first year in terms of second year housing, is that more of the question? Yeah, just some um, questions about like, um, there are some questions about how common is it to stay in university housing? And then how do you, how do you figure out what you're going to do um, for your second year? When does that start? When does that process start? Got it. So um, there is certainly some internal pressure within the student community to begin thinking about second year housing as early as like September or October of your first year. And as Countess said earlier, we want you to be patient and wait to make that housing decision until it's the right time for you. Because our on-grounds process, at least for the residential colleges, does not really begin until November for students that are looking ahead to living on grounds for their second year and beyond. Um, and then they don't select their particular apartment in those style of communities until January. Um, so there is ample time for students to figure out who it is that they wanna live with and where they wanna live, whether that's on grounds or off grounds. Um, and so, so yeah, we love for people to live on grounds. That's always our preference. Um, we have around 40% of second years that choose to live with us um, during their second year. And that percentage drops down as students go into their third and fourth year. I will say that unlike the first year process where everything is random, um, the upper class process is more like selecting your seat on an airline. And so you get to create roommate groups if you want. Um, and you get to, if you participate and pay attention to the deadlines uh, and participate in the online selection that happens in late January, you get to go on and take a look and see what's available and then place yourself. There's one group leader um, and then that group leader places themselves and the other folks in that roommate group in their actual space. So it's not like your first year where it's random, um, you really get the opportunity to go on, select your roommates if you want, and select yourself into the, into the apartment or space where you want to live. Okay, we're still getting a lot of questions about dates, so I just want to remind you all that housing.virginia.edu, that website down there, lays all of this out. It, sometimes it's more helpful to see it written out on a screen, so please visit the website. As we said before, you can also look at all the different buildings at UVA and see what the different rooms look like and floor plans and layouts and all of that. Um, and don't forget to follow the housing office on Instagram and Twitter. They, they put a lot of great information and parents may want to follow them on Facebook. Um, I'm, this is just a fun one that came through um, that might be interesting. Can someone talk about how you get one of those great rooms on the UVA lawn. Oh yeah, so the, the lawn process is one that is extremely competitive for students that are going in to their final year at UVA. There's only 54 spaces, um, so students will apply and their applications are reviewed um, by fellow students at the university who um, will make the decision as to who's selected. And um, Jamel himself was among those selected for the lawn for next year. And um, so I know it's a big honor and he's really excited about the option to live out on the lawn. All right, congratulations, Jamel, that's awesome. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, this session was recorded and we'll be posting it on the virtual UVA website in a few days. So if there was anything that, um, that went by a little quickly, you can revisit it. 
Again, remember the website and also remember the webinars that are coming up for the different residential colleges. If those are of interest to you, check those out, okay? Um, thank you all so much for joining us. If you have any questions, remember the housing office has their email address there too, if there's anything that's really specific that you'd like to discuss with them, all right? Thank you all so much. Have a great day and we'll see all of you students in the next webinar. Bye, everyone. <laughs>